Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015. One of the big subjects here is flash. Flash, 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 it's everywhere. But there's this constant uh, struggle between capacity and performance. And we gotta come up with ways to better resolve that issue. Joining me on the whiteboard to talk about that, I've asked Rob Cummings, he's the Vice President of Marketing at Tejile, to talk about these issues. Rob, how are you doing today? Excellent, thanks George. Let's talk about this performance versus capacity issue. All right, so first, like you said, you know, we, we all used to live in a, what I'll call a disk world. Right. We've been doing that for 30, 40 years. And then we moved over to Flash, and everyone thought, okay, the Flash revolution is here. That's a, like a chip, not a little bug. Okay. But, <laughs> excuse my art. But just like we had in, in the disk world, we had 15K RPM drives and 7,200 RPM drives, or if you're really old like me, you might remember a 3,600 RPM drive. I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. But now what we've got is there's not just one grade of flash. Yeah, that's right. What we're leveraging is our IntelliFlash architecture we use in hybrid okay. today that uses flash for performance and disk for capacity. Right. Now we're going to break this out and use PCIe, NVDIMS, type down, down here, up there, and then what I'll call high density flash down here. So we're actually breaking that tension again between capacity and performance like we've always had. Okay, so in, in this world, the NVDIM sort of acts as a shock absorber to the high density flash. Right, who knew that we'd have to actually mask flash latencies. Right, yeah, of course. And so then the, the overall idea here is leveraging the intelligence you already have that does this uh, automation over here and use it in the flash world as well. Right, so don't tell my engineers this, but the hard work's already been done right. because we had to mask disk drive latencies you know, 10, 15 millisecond latencies. Sure. Now we're just masking one millisecond latency. So the hard work has actually been done here. We're just extending the architecture. Okay. So this flash layer down here, is this like a TLC 3D NAND type of technology? Actually, we've been very, very conservative that way. Our existing hybrid in all flash arrays use enterprise class MLC. Okay. This high density flash that we're introducing now is using MLC. So there's still a lot of legs in the architecture okay. for more aggressive high density technologies once we feel comfortable with the reliability and the endurance and things like that. Okay, and then up here you're using the uh, the, the MVDIM, so very low latency there running on the memory bus. That's I exactly correct. Okay, wow. What, what are you hitting as far as uh, price performance uh, type of numbers here? In uh, what I'll call right in the middle of our range on this new IntelliFlash HD, mm -hmm. let's call it a petabyte of capacity, wow. raw, okay. is where it starts, okay. and it can go up to... So wait, raw, that's without deduplication and compression. That's correct. It took me a second to register that, go ahead. Yeah. So petabyte raw, so that we could be talking five, 10 petabytes of storage. So it scales up to 10 petabytes okay. with, if you give me a nominal three to one data reduction ratio, okay. and it'll achieve, using this technology up to here, up to five million IOPS. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, so what's the, uh, so it, it, can I still get a hard drives in the system or is this just a pure flash play? This is what I'll call a multi-tiered flash array. Okay. Architecturally we could put disk back there, but with this high density flash, we're getting, again with that three to one data reduction ratio, uh -huh. at street customer pricing, 50 cents per gigabyte. Wow, okay. So, so it's like, makes the disk drive, right, you know, yeah. okay, we finally here, the disk drive is, is not necessary in a, a high performance production environment anymore. Okay, so when you talk about five million IOPS, uh, you know, a lot of times when we, we see systems that are in that sort of uh, category of performance, we're also talking a loss of features. I mean, you guys have had a robust feature history. Do, do, do we have to give up any features to get that? No, this is all built on our existing IntelliFlash OS. Okay. So you get that inline deduplication, compression, snapshots, replication, all the integration work we've done with VMware, Microsoft, Oracle, it's all, and that's the beauty of it. You can start all the way down here with a, let's call it a 10 or 15 terabyte hybrid away, array and get all the way up to this monster that's at 5 million IOPS, 10 petabytes of effective capacity, all running the exact same code. Wow, all right, trick question. If I have this system running in my production data center, but I don't want, I don't need that kind of performance, I don't think in my DR, could I mix 
one of these with one of the more traditional hybrid arrays? You can. You can use the native replication tools and go from all flash to hybrid. Lots of our customers do that today. Yeah, well, it makes sense, right? Because you're, in theory, not going to be declaring a disaster every day. You probably yep. should look at moving, yep. right? The other place that a lot of people use that kind of multi-system hybrid and all flash is in um, DevOps and test, dev, QA, sure. where I was just talking to a customer this morning. Um, he's got 16 instances of his database hide in the background, effectively only stores one, and then just the diffs between them all. So he's saving big dollars. Oh yeah, Where he used to have 16 different instances of the array, of the database, now he's got one. Wow, that's it. So one other question on this, uh, what's the uh, physical footprint of it, if that, in that one petabyte system? That one petabyte system uses uh, 2U of controllers and 3U of capacity. So 5U, you get a petabyte raw. That's impressive. All right. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very excited about it. Yeah, I guess so. Rob, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thanks, George. So there you have it. You can get very high density flash now. And really, one of the other angles, other than price per gigabyte, is just the amount of data that we can put in a very, very small space. So that's another feature of flash that we haven't only begun to explore now. I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.